as the horse comes towards us, we're obviously looking at the front feet. I'm looking for level footfall. I can see this horse, has, uh, his feet are slightly to the inside, so uh, we need to address that. We're going to be shoeing the hind feet on this horse first. Again, his base is quite narrow. Moves straight but close. So lateral support, particularly on the left hind, uh, would be advantageous. At the trot, we're looking for a level horse and we're looking at any accentuation in his gait. We've seen him coming towards us, and now we're watching him going away, looking at the hind limbs. There's no interferences. Um, this particular horse is just a bit of lateral support, as we would call it, what would be advan advantageous. So here we have the imprint foot care system. It's in a, an aluminium case. It's all self-contained in this kit. Um, we have a one, two, three system really. When we've prepared the foot, we use a surgical spirit to, to kill bacteria. We use a methyl methacrylate type adhesive, the imprint structural adhesive to bond the shoe. And then the, the number three is the shoe freezer which cools the shoe. So the one, two, three is clean it, glue it, cool it. Um, we have a container here which we heat the shoe in with the hot water. The shoes themselves have got stud holes in. This is the imprint sport. We have an option without stud holes. We're going to shoe this horse behind and uh, let's, see, let's check the size of the hoof. This foot is yet to be trimmed. but It's the same as for fitting a regular steel shoe, the, the width and the length of the foot. I've got here a five by five and a half shoe. And I'm putting it on with the ground bearing surface close to the foot. That looks to me a nice fit. We don't want the shoe outside the diameter of the hoof. It's only when we deform the rim of the shoe that we can fit it onto the foot. It's not a boot going onto a hoof, it's a shoe fitting grafting on as to be an integral part of the foot. So here we have like for like. In the second half of the foot there'll be a bit of fullness as, as a, with all good shoeing. Now I'm going to trim the foot. Um, most of this is just as, as we would trim a foot conventionally, only the detail in the cleanliness and cutting out and removing any necrotic tissue, any undermined horn, it is, it is uh, vitally important that that is carried out. I'll be using surgical spirit to, to kill any bacteria at you know, microscopic level after thorough cleaning. Bevel off the keen edges. We'll bring the wall into a straight line. And around the toe, we make sure that that's backed up well so he's not going to have a shoe stuck out in front to trip. And we will rasp 
right from the buttress of the heel around and remove any periopal on the, just the lower half to three quarters of an inch because we're bonding to that area. Just clean the wall with the rasp. Good boy. Once the foot's trimmed, surgical spirit. Round the white line, the frog, the clefts, pretty much everywhere. But so long as the horn is rasped up, down to, to clean horn, that, that's fine. On the outer wall, it's just under the sole, it's important with the spirit really. We're now going to put these uh, indentations in the notches which support the shoe, hold the shoe in place. It's a, a ball and socket, a dovetail effect. Um, and the three points are the widest point of the foot right back at the heel quarter, in the, right up in towards the toe, and one at the point in, in between. And if I just get a shoe, these are half the height of the rim of the shoe, so right in the middle of the height of the rim of the shoe, not high where nails are, lo as low as we can go, so maybe five or six millimetres from the uh, base of the shoe. Let's have a look, fella. Good boy. There's one, it has the undercut, about 10 millimetres by 8 millimetres. One in the toe. And one in between. Good boy. To just on the inside now. I'm pouring on the boiling water. The shoe is on the shoe support accessory which elevates it in the container. And I'm just filling the water to a level which only submerges the rim of the shoe, not the ground-bearing surface. We don't want to soften that. We don't want to create this uh, a softness here, so the shoe is more likely to sink in onto the onto the sole. I use latex gloves. It's important to use latex and not vinyl. Latex. Vinyl will stick to it and you won't get, it, get them off. Now, shh, imprint structural adhesive on the hoof. Come on, fella. Now, from the buttress of one heel to the height of the rim, in the notches, around the toe, and back round to the other heel. I take the shoe from the container, wet my hands, run a finger around the outside edge, bring the coolant with me. Make sure the rim is not going to fold in. Offer it onto the foot. Make sure it's just tucked back so as I can just see the toe, the toe of the hoof. So is it set under the foot then? Wrap it onto the hoof. Gently snug squeeze. At the heel here, just divide any pl plastic, push it to the side if it's not desired and you don't want it to press upon the soft fleshy bulb of the heel. Run my finger back on the frog here to blend the frog plate to the frog. Don't press it hard into the sole but it's sitting in contact all around its margin. When we've mated that from heel to heel, it's in the correct position, then 
press the indents in. One on the heel, two in the middle, and three at the toe, and then re-smooth the plastic. Same on the outside. One in the toe, one in the middle, and one at the heel. You'll see the, the adhesive being pushed out of these hollows. They're more than hollows, these notches. The, the keying of this plastic into these indentations is fundamental to the success of this procedure. Now the shoe should look part of the foot now with seating clearance under the toe here of the shoe, underneath, the, around the, uh, the solar margin there's clearance so as the sole and the hoof can act as a diaphragm with freedom of movement between the two. It's back to the bulbs of the heels, it's under the toe, it's time to use the freezer spray, cooling it from heel to heel, avoid the hairline or skin and just trickle that on over all surfaces, under the shoe, around the rim particularly, until the shoe is white and cool in appearance. When the, these cans are running low, you need to have them completely upright. When you're happy that it's cool to touch, white in appearance, you should wait bare. The shoe and the hoof shouldn't move independently. They sh if they move, they move as one now. And then once that's firmly attached, we get the adhesive again. Hopefully it's still, still soft enough to dispense and just run a small bead around the rim from heel to heel. And then just smooth it off. to ensure complete seal. Just needs to stand now for 10 minutes and that should become integral part of the hoof. Now the horse is shod, we will take him out and re-evaluate him at the walk and trot and just check his level and his gait is free. Again, we're looking exactly at the same things that we looked at when we first saw the horse. But what I'm wanting to see is a horse that's feet are more up together, he's moving level and straight, and he's free in his gait. I believe he's doing all of these things. We watch him going away. I believe he's got a little bit more lateral support on that left hind. And He's not moving any closer. He looks comfortable and relaxed. Now as he walks towards us, we're looking at the front limbs, look at the left and the right. We're looking for a level footfall and a free gait, all of which he seems to be doing. Now at the trot we want to see him free and happy. He's quite keen to go. 